Hello and welcome to Tales from the Twists, the podcast where we recap your childhood. My name is Joseph Lewis and I'm joined here today by my co-host Anthony Bull. How are you, Anthony? I am well, Joe. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. We are joined here today to talk about the adjective I would use to describe Anthony, brainless. Episode. Oh, you, you, <laughs> you, you are a fucking asshole. <laughs> Episode 8 of Season 3 of Around the Twist, an Australian TV show. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, children's TV show. Yep, apparently, a little bit weird that we still talk about it, being age twenty six. But you know, eh, it's not that weird. Yeah, there are weirder things. Like, to be honest, today's society is all obsessed with child look things anyway. So whatever. Yeah, this, is, this is true. Yeah, yeah whether well, that's a good thing or a bad thing, it's you. It's, it really depends on who you talk to. Okay. It does. It just does. I'm not going to badmouth it, particularly with the people who listen to the podcast and enjoy <laughs> some people from their nostalgic well, past. Us. That doesn't necessarily mean they're not adults, because I mean, yeah. shit, they listen to it while they go to work. Yeah. They Working is a toll mark of being an adult. I didn't have to work when I was a kid. Yeah, this I is true. I had to go to school and I did. learn things. Ugh. I worked in a coal mine. Did you? Till I was about eight years old, yeah. Oh, man. No, I didn't. <laughs> We are talking about Brainless, which is Season 3, Episode 8 of Run the Twist, as I said. And we start off every episode of Run the Twist with a teaser. And this week we have... It's a, an old filmy grain type thing black. of the 1920s black and white. Black and white vaudeville. Vaud- vaudevillian. Yeah, act. silent film. Yep. And we've got Tony and Faye. They're sitting down and they're clapping for Bronson, who is a sideshow host. And they're all kind of wearing old-fashioned suits. And Bronson pulls the brains out of Pete and Linda, juggles them, and drops them. And we get the title, Brainless. Hmm. There you go. Dead What exactly What do you think of this happen. teaser? Uh, I think artistically it was interesting. Yeah, it was, uh, it was nice to see something a little bit different. Yeah. I, I liked do- them playing with the teaser. I like that. I like that. I did. I like that, I like sometimes. Too. I just didn't like that he just drops the brains, I guess. It's kind of dumb. Well, it's classic Bronson though, isn't it? Yeah, I guess. Okay, like, oh, it would have been cool if he was dressed up more like a um juggler, more like the fool. Uh, yeah, like a fool a in jester. like a vaudeville style. Act. Okay, I mean you can't have him dra- draw the Hitler mustache on him because make him look like Charlie Chaplin, but you can at least make him look like a sad clown. Yeah, yeah. You know, th- this is a, this is a little bit tangential and so early, but UK Big Brother. Yes. Have you ever seen it? No. The thing that's interesting about the UK Big Brother it's very similar to the Australian one, only they've kind of defined it to this craft they know exactly what to do to set off their housemates they know mm-hmm. exactly what to do to you know make things happen to make yep. things interesting to create drama where the australian guys haven't quite mastered that they're more interested in the weird challenges and stuff that they make them do instead of using those challenges to create drama but the interesting thing about the uk one is that between the show creators and the audience they have this understanding between them of pantomime yeah. You know, the old-fashioned pantomime. Pantomime, And yeah. they play that out. Like, the audience plays into it, and so do the creators, and so do the cast a lot of the time. They fit into these classical archetypes, like the jester, mm-hmm. the, like the fool, the king, and the queen, and, like, all these classical archetypes, and it plays out like this melodrama. And the the crowd will cheer, and they will boo, like, appropriately, because they're all playing into this agreed between them, this almost social contract between the creators of the show and the audience of this... You know, this pantomime. It's oh, really yeah. it's really interesting. Okay. You know, from that cultural perspective that all these parties are we'll agreed to, you know, play out this thing. It's almost like a almost a game. And from an outsider's perspective, it's really interesting. Yeah, I imagine because, it would be seeing how they interact with one another. Especially because they'll often vote for the audience I'm talking about now. The audience will vote for the person who is most interesting to win, not the person they think is the, the most likable. Yeah. In the Australian one, you often just get, you know, the guy with the six-pack or the gay person or whatever. Yeah, usually the, it's either a guy with a six-pack, a gay person, or... The sassy woman. Or, or sassy chick. She's never the hot chick, yeah. right? Because the hot chick always yeah, gets voted out. Yeah, because they can't out. identify. Yeah. But, uh, they always go for these people that, uh, you know, they, they like the most. Whereas in the UK one, often the winner is the most interesting. Like the person who's creating the most drama, you know, playing into that pantomime, rewarding the audience of what they want to see, what they're tuning in for. This drama. Anyway, tangent. It's all mm-hmm. tangent. But I just find that super interesting. So if you want to check it out, UK Big Brother, you can find it on YouTube. Bronson is at school on a Saturday mm-hmm. with Pete and Linda. And he's very sad. That he's on, at school on a Saturday. And Pete and Linda are wearing these brain helmets. And they said, listen, we're here for you on this Saturday. We're here so no one will see us wearing these ridiculous brain helmets. Because we're doing your science project. Mm-hmm. And they're saying, we're only, we're only doing it because 
you've convinced that science geek you tricked him into helping you. And Bronson says, listen, A, Anthony is not a science geek. B, I didn't trick him. And C, he offered to help. Now, Anthony, how do you feel about this? Your namesake being labeled as a science geek. He's a pussy, isn't he? I already he said is. that. But I, I thought he said, um, firstly, secondly, and then he said fifth. Oh, did he? Fifthly, yeah. Because um, I, I, I remember writing down thinking, you know, I remember writing down it was very much like Monty Python's Holy Grail. Oh, they grew, the classic film. Yeah, the classic one where he's like, must, uh, th- every time they, someone said three, they said yes. five instead. Yeah. So, yeah, so I, that's what my mind went to. I don't like this, Anthony. He's a bit of a wuss. <laughs> yes, he is. He is not the the greatest upholder of the great Anthony name. No, he is not. And all the lines of Anthony, who is your favourite Anthony that isn't you? It's not Tony Abbott. When you think about it, uh, you think is it, it Tony? Yeah. Then you think what about it. Anthony Twist? No, I don't like Anthony Twist either. God, there's no. Joke. I like season one Anthony Twist. Tony, uh, Tony Twist for those uninitiated. Tony the Tiger. Yeah. Who's yeah. Tony the Tiger? Oh, he's an American sponsor of like his cereal. He'd go around and tell kids how to be athletic, and he'd be like, "They're great." But I don't know. He was like really athletic, and he could do shit. I don't know. Okay. He's cool. the coolest one, I guess. Or Fat Tony from The Simpsons. Pete says. Of course, of course, science geek Anthony is going to help you because he wants, he loves Linda and he just wants all the FaceTime with Linda that he can get and he's using you, Bronson. And well, Linda's Bronson's not using um, Anthony, so. Yes. Really, they're using each other. Yeah. Yeah. Contractual agreement, almost. Why is it that the twins are even there? Yeah. Yeah, you're the ones being used. Okay? Yeah, this it's is like, true. Yeah, like, seriously. They both, the other two are smart. I, I feel like Bronson's getting smarter. They, so they're aware that they're using each other. The twins yeah. are just like, oh, you're, you're using you. Why are you there? Yeah. That's a question you should ask. <laughs> yeah, that is true. They're not, uh, I wouldn't do it. You know, no. put a big brain helmet on my head and agree. What could go wrong? Everything. You know, we find out they're trying to use this brain helmet telepathic machine thing to see if brains can, twins can communicate telepathically. I wouldn't agree to this. No. What if something goes wrong? Yeah, it's my brain, right? You know, you're linked up with your twin as well. We've already seen body switching. We have. You want to be stuck in your sister's body, Pete? Is that what you want here, mate? That's what I thought was going to happen. Well, they've already done that. I I think that would have been more... I don't know. I think Gribble was probably a good choice for that episode, for the body swapping with Pete. But uh, Linda and Pete could also have been an interesting one as well. What would have been more interesting, I guess it's a bit more Freaky Friday, but Linda and Gribble. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. It'd be a bit, they'd be very weird though. Yeah, because they were like they described that like the writers around the table would have been like, mm, yeah, let's not go there. No, that just does, that's just not right. The twist rush to go inside, so nobody sees them wearing their ridiculous brain helmets that are required for the machine. And the Gribble Gang is here for no r- reason. Why are they here on a Saturday? Yeah, what's up with that? They must have Saturday detention. I I looked at the frame a few times, a few yeah. of the frames. I was trying to work out what they're doing here. They're just standing against a wall. What are you What are you doing here? Do you have nothing better to do? Go watch TV. Go play your Nintendo 64. Yeah, they would probably... Well, I don't know why they're doing that. That doesn't make any sense. Why are you they hanging be out here. at school? They weren't graffitiing. I thought, oh, they must be graffitiing. Checked the footage. Couldn't see any evidence of graffiti. They weren't in school. Like, they weren't in a classroom coming out after detention. detention. And then you don't see Harold. What would have been better is if we had, like, Harold's car was there or something. And, and Harold was at it. the school. No, no, Harold was just at the school because he was talking to... The principal well, with sponsorship deals or whatever, you know, cause talking he, with Splooge. Yeah, Splooge, and he's because he's a local businessman and he's trying to get investments in the school, or maybe he's trying to do other things. Because or his mother, matron, PTA committee or something. Mm. And you got to bring the kids with you because I got nothing else to do. Yeah, yeah. So you got kids play outside. Yeah, That's it, it would have been better if, like normally, yeah. people's trying to organise some sort of event or something. Yeah, if they were doing that here instead of just them being there. It would have been better if they, if Gribbles had just come out of the room and said, can't believe Snapper gave you detention for that. Oh. And it just would have been, that was a Saturday detention. But then you would have had Snapper at the school. Exactly. Then that, you see, this is the thing. The writers should have then thought of all this and said, you know, do we even need the Gribbles in this? Yeah. We don't. We do not need this. I don't even, do the Gribbles play a large part in this episode? I can't even remember. Yes, they do. They do? Oh, they oh. do. They do indeed. But I think it would have been better if they saw them on the way to the school than sneaked. Yes. Them. But... That would have required another location. So yeah, maybe true. it was cheaper to do this. Maybe they put it there initially and then they're like, well, we kind of need to concise our location. So I just, we could have just had the them school. out. Like the location could have just been outside the school. Literally. Yeah, and they were walking like, past. They were walking past and be like, like, because they're heading to the video arcade and like, what are they yeah. doing? What are the twins doing? The video at hallway. School? 
with that geek Anthony wearing that his headset. I gotta see this. We gotta yes. know what these these look because remember the Gribs know that whenever they follow the twists, weird shit happens. Yes, so they want to know what happens next. Yes, mm. weird stuff happens when you go when you follow the, twist. the twins from the twist. Yeah, you know, works. Those what, what were they called in episode one? The scabby twins from the tw- tip. Yeah, scabby twins twi- from the twist. T- t- twins, t- tip twins or something. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. We're getting old, Anthony. We're getting, we're getting Can't remember old. everything. We used to. My brain doesn't work. Not enough room up in there. No, but There's I do too like much Kabbalah. Too much Kabbalah. I do like how Gribbs referred to uh, Bronson as little squirt. How that's still carrying over. Yes, we'll, yeah. we'll just get to that. Gribble says it's the little squirt and the bionic brainiacs, and he says, "Don't wet yourself." I don't know why they'd be wetting themselves. Are they referring to when Bronson could pee really far? Because that was in a previous season, and we haven't seen a lot of interaction between. Yeah. Why are they now suddenly calling him little squirt again? A throwback, I guess. Maybe the writer especially liked that episode and was like, oh, I want to reference it. Well, it's one of the most popular ones. Who, so, or by the way, iconic ones, at least. I believe wrote and directed this episode. His name was Ray Bosley, something I wrote down because he sounded a bit like a Bosley. He does sound a like a Bosley. A name that I enjoy immensely. You enjoy Charlie's Angels? Well, I just like it used as a nickname. Okay. You know, the guy from Charlie's Angels was a guy I used to work with, everyone called Bosley. Okay. I just... It's fun. It's a fun nickname. It's a fun name. It sounds it's great. Not, it's got a nice sounding... Bosley? Bosley. Yeah, Bosley. Bosley. My name's Bosley. Yes. Yeah. Well, good. you don't say it like that. Bosley. You say, hey, Bosley, get me some carrots out of the fridge, mate. You that's, get it yourself. You I'm Bosley PD. Bosley PD. Yeah, Bosley PD. You don't take shit from no one. And Bronson says, you'll be wetting yourself out to the other side of your face. I'm not sure what that means. And he says, Sick burn. When we are world-famous urologists. Mm. Maybe the most clever thing that Bronson's ever says. Linda quickly corrects him and says, You mean neurologists? It's actually funnier. As a urologist? Yeah, urologist. So maybe he did know what he was saying. Those who don't know urologists, I believe, means someone who is an expert of we. If you are a urologist and you're out there listening, tell us what you do. Yeah. What do you do? What do you do? Are you just an academic? Yeah. Do you analyse pee? I mostly look at, pe- at men's penises all day and just... Is that what they do? Yeah. Is that a urologist? It's a big part of their job is looking at men's penises. Also women's... Whatever... Is, they, but that's a whatever gynecologist. The tube, pardon? That's a gynecologist, right? The, no, but the pee part of the woman. Ah. They also wouldn't do they the just use a, part, Yeah, but wouldn't examples. they just use a, you, a gynecologist for that? No, no. Maybe, but like... Okay, so when a man gets like kidney stones or something... Yes. They contact a urologist. So it's a, a proper thing? Yeah. Okay. It's total thing. It's like a medical thing, bruh. Yeah. Just okay. saying. And they probably and it's just that the there's a big urethra in men, whereas opposed to women, it's smaller. So I guess they spend a lot of time dealing with men because there's more real, real just like, estate. Look, probably just as like as an example. Yes. That um, men can actually get breast cancer, but it's very rare. Okay. So you could be it would be fair to say that most people, most breast cancer ologists stare at boobs all day mm. because. Of women's boobs, like because they do, but they also probably look at men's boobs as well. Sometimes, yes. yeah, fair enough. There you go. Pete and Linda want to escape before it gets more embarrassing, and then are completely ashamed when Anthony shows up. You know, a lot of support for your friend here, just because he's a little bit different doesn't yeah. mean you have to be a total douche about him. And he's wearing some ridiculous clothing, to be fair. Yeah. And the twist sleeve, as Bronson and the uh, Professor Anthony, they're like, "Oh, hey, what's going on? Let's do some science," because. Bronson's not afraid. No, he is not. He's not afraid of being a geek. You know what I hate? What? When people say geekdom or fandom. Yeah. Get over yourself. Geekdom. You don't need to... Yeah, I don't like this. It's yeah. like, oh, you know, oh, I'm a part of the geekdom. You know, the fandom of this show that I like. I don't like that. Well, okay, just remember that, like, the rise of the geek as a popular... As a aspirational figure has only been in the last 15 years. Yeah, you know, I don't know if we've mentioned this before, but the people are going to hate me for this, but I feel similarly about yeah. being called a nerd. Yeah. At, or people using the word n- nerd as one of the other famous N-words. Like, as a child, right? I was... Oh. I was <laughs> so the, the, the word nerd is comparable to the N-word. No, no, no. Not, obviously not okay, with the okay, same okay, magnitude. Right. Obviously not with the same magnitude, but it's a similar evolution of the word, right? Yeah, it, it, sort of, it sort of is. It's how the we word called... was used to disparage and put down people. But now because of the rise of information technology and how nerds make 
tons of money now. Yeah. Like being a nerd, being a coder is a way to make a lot of money. Yeah. It's an aspirational goal. Also, the internet allows us to look back into the past so we can hold on to our nostalgia. Yeah. So holding this wealth of knowledge and information, being a nerd is considered a favorable trait. Yeah. People who were never nerds in, in school at all now latch onto this as a yeah. symbol yeah. of their... What can we call it? Uh, well, because it's coolness. What I was yeah. going to say was, I didn't have a great time in primary school. You know, people called me a nerd and stuff, and, you know, I didn't have a great time. Bullied. That that word, you know, it was a word of oppression. And now, suddenly it's cool. Everyone's using it. I'm a nerd. It's like, no, you don't get to say that. Because, yeah. you know, you didn't have to... That wasn't a word of abuse for you. Like, th- that, that was something that, like, was no, used against that. you, yeah. and now, oh, I'm cool. It's like, no... Take a step back. You're not a nerd. You just wear the glasses so that you think that you can be cool. Or say, oh, yeah, I've got Pokemon Red on my on my iPhone that I use a emulator well, for. It's nerd. like, oh, it's so, so nerdy. I can name three Pokemon. Oh, look at me. I'm a nerd. Oh, look at me. I have this. Nerdy. Nerdy is looking up actual videos about Pokemon lore. Which is, which, which no, nerdy. Pokemon is not. A pe- <sighs> That's the other thing. Pokemon. It's, it's more geeky. Pokemon's super mainstream. Oh, here we go. We're going to cut divisions of the mainstream. Fuck. What, what is it going to be now? I've got to look up bloody, um, some sort of, I don't know, what, what, what would be better? What, you, you know what we were doing? What? We were, we were, what were in you high doing? school, what were you doing? we were drawing pictures of our favorite obscure text based internet game on our graphics calculators in grade 11. That's nerdy. Don't it's tell me that crazy Pokemon nerdy. Red on your iPhone is nerdy. Now nah, get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here. Okay, well, so that's fine. But I, I just think that nerdy is, yeah. I, I think, though, what you should be calling it is more esoteric. I think that's what you could describe. Nerds. Yes. Like, true nerds today are really more esoteric. Okay. Than anything else. Like, Can they you know, explain what you mean by esoteric? We're, we're kind of esoteric. We have this wealth of knowledge. In inverted commas. We don't have any knowledge. We just make it up. Yeah, right. Of random weird shit that most people don't seem to care about because it's like, for some reason, it's not that important. That's kind of a nerdy. He's getting this okay. obsession with this one thing or getting deeper into this one element. Well, you and I, we don't, have, the mainstream. we don't have a one central thing. No, we don't. Just, it's just like weird stuff. And there's people way more nerdier than us, like tons more nerdier than us. Like, you ever listen to the Overthinking a Podcast is a good example? Yes. Yep. Good, yeah, good podcast, by the way. Yeah. We'd like to support fellow podcasts, Overthinking Podcast, a lot, popu- lot more popular than us. They're pretty good. If you don't know them, check them out. Yeah, they're very nerdy and very esoteric. They know a lot of just Yeah, they know way more than us. Yeah, oh, God. Jeez. When I first listened, I'm like, holy crap. They are yeah. switched on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that is enough about nerds for one nerds. lifetime, maybe. Yes. Pete and Linda are hooked up to the anthonic bronsometer, and Pete's worried about safety. Now, I just want to refer to some feedback we have from one of our listeners who writes in every time we do a Round the Twist episode to give some feedback. And his name is Reagan Pontillo. Reagan. Reagan, Reagan Pontillo. Pontillo. Sorry. Regan. 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 Regan Pontillo. Regan Pontillo. And we call it Pontillo's Pontifications. Yes. And you can run in too and have your feedback right out on the show, just like Regan, or like Phil Bates in our Run the Twist episode, in our Captain Planet episode. Yeah, just join Chicken Twisties. Just join Chicken Twisties. We'll, we'll drop that, how you can do that at the end of the episode. But Pontillo has said a few things this week, one of them being that the Anthonic Bronsometer analyzes typical brainwave te- telepathy and the... T- it's judging whether the twins can read each other's minds, okay? Mm-hmm. And Linda will find out later in episode seven of season four, it's called Hairbrain, that reading people's minds is as simple as using an experimental hair curling solution. Hmm. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Maybe uh, Anthony. Yes. Right. Not you. Not me. A- other Anthony. Maybe he developed the technology for that hair curling solution afterwards. Well, I don't know. I don't know if I've ever seen that episode. There's a lot of... There's a mm. few season three, season four episodes that I've just never seen. Yeah, exactly. Like, know, I'd seen everything of season one and I'd seen 90% of season two because I used to watch season one all the time. I just haven't seen all of season three and four. Yeah, that's I true. thought I had. I thought I had, but it just turns out that I hadn't. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, I thought so as well. Yes, but we found out very quickly that you'd not seen any of the episodes yeah. back in season one. It's true. I hadn't seen any of them. That's yes. good. You know, going in there you know, fresh, 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 fresh mind. They need a gateway between the minds. So they stick the, I thought that was what the brain helmets were, but yes, they I stick they these too. giant tubes in Pete Linda's noses. And Anthony says, let's get turned on. 
which Pontillo mentioned as well, he thought was a bit weird, because Anthony follows up with uh, the machine, that is. But, yep. you know, a bit raunchy for it's a once children's the show. the nose, if someone came out with you and said, oh, we're going to do this experiment, but you need to stick a hose up your nose. And then starts talking about getting turned on. Well, it's just getting... I'm not sticking anything up my nose. You know... Oh, so you're not even talking about the let's turn it on. You're talking about the nose sticking. No, I'm not sticking anything experimental up my nose. I mean, you've seen... You know how the Egyptians extracted <laughs> the brain when, yes. from mummies? They got a hook and they drive it through the nose. Yes. I know that you could go straight into your brain from there. I'm not an idiot. I'm not sticking something in my nose that could potentially get shot up into my brain. Yeah, I used to be a bit very uh, standoffish about picking my nose when I was younger. I was like... Are you pulling out bits of your brain? Good like, <laughs> what is snot? It's just a mucus, discharge. Right? Mucus, a discharge from your throat and na- nasal cavities? I think so. I'm not sure. I don't know. Could be. If you're a nasologist. N- n- nasologist. I think the, that's a, that, that is also a New Zealandologist as well. A nasologist. Nasologist, yeah. Anthony turns on the machine. Not you. Not me. There's a failure. Is it a voltage lag? He turns up the voltage. Still no go. Starts whacking it with a hammer. This is something that you would do, by the way. I would you totally would, do you that. You would totally. Except you wouldn't use a hammer. You would just go, ah, ah. I would say that. I would do that. And then I'd say, work, work. I'd say, you are a machine and you work for me. Because I'm not going to let a machine tell me what to do. I'm a human being. Machine does what it's told. If it doesn't, it ends up in a scrap heap. Look right. out, Singularity. Singularity, look out. Anthony's coming for you. No AI revolution Why well, should Actually, if AI Thank revolution... You. Well, okay, if the AI happens and it's intelligent, but otherwise if it's programmed, you do what you're freaking told, mate. Yeah, but you don't even like the artificial intelligence singularity. You would rather that we keep our jobs from these stinking robots. Well, actually, no. I, I would rather us be freed of our jobs. What? Yeah, this I'd is, rather... This is a 180, Anthony. No, it's What's not. Happening? No, it's not. I'd rather be free of, like... I'd, I'd rather we'd have purpose, we could just pursue our own goals... But the fact of the matter is, we're not going to. It's not going to happen that way. Or it's it could, but the the decade or twenty years it takes to go to that transitionary period is going to be a hectic one. That's you know, people are going to lose their houses and food and all that stuff. You know, it could take a decade. It could take five years. Can you go hungry for five years? Can you avoid paying your your house for five years? Probably not. Obviously, yeah. that, that's the that's that's the part that scares me. It's the transitionary period. Yeah. Anyway, enough. I've talked enough about robots. Everyone knows how my, my opinions on them. The yeah, calm down, Anthony. Fuck stop, robots. stop raving God about damn things. robots. That's no, all right. All right, you damn dirty robots. Yeah, the machine's still not working. Bronson realizes that it's not plugged in. Classic. That would be my first thing to look at. I would always check if it's on first. Yeah, like it just duh. Like, is this a bonehead move? Come on, Anthony. You're a scientist. It starts working. Crazy activation. The brains they fly out. Of the heads through the noses in these tiny little tubes and explode out mm-hmm. of this little tube they have at the end. And it, they fly through the air and land in this axolotl tank. Axolotl is the Mexican fish, right? The, the walking fish? Yeah, the walking fish. I think so. They landed, in this, I didn't see it, but they landed in a tank that was labeled axolotl tank, which I guess is some sort of a joke because the brains land there. Oh man. Then the machine explodes and Pete and Linda, their bodies are frozen. And the Gribbles are watching from outside. They're like, oh, what's going on here? And uh, Pete and Linda can speak to each other in their brains. And Linda says, I must have been out of my head to agree with this. What a what a pun. Yeah, and, and that's where I was just like, oh, God, it's one of those episodes. Pontillo says, be prepared for at least 20 brain puns throughout the episode. And I think that number is pretty conservative. Yeah, I think it's pretty conservative. I, I think there's a lot more than that. Also, insert a dig by Ed Spinstorn about brainless progressives here. Yes. He, you know how much he hates the modern progressives, even though he's a staunch lefty. Okay. Tell me. I, we've already discussed it before. Yes. Yeah. Listen to other podcasts. Raise, raise your voices for freedom and democracy. Freedom, democracy, uh, snapper here. He's like, man, I don't know, whatever. Just thought, that, that idea came to me, although it's, maybe it's just my bias creeping in. It's definitely my bias creeping in. Obviously. Obviously, you libertarian nut job. Yeah, I'm fucking crazy. You soulless and Rand supporter. Anthony... Sand Rand. Sand, who's Sand Rand? It's Iron Rand made of sand. I don't fucking know. <laughs> She's made of sand, like, uh, in Aladdin, where you have the Cave of Mysteries. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Okay. <laughs> Anthony's very confused. He can't think of a plan. He doesn't know what to do. Linda, who can only talk to Pete and vice versa, they can't talk to any of the outside world because they're brains and they don't have mouths. Linda says... It's like watching the Three Stooges, only they're missing one. And Pete says, 
They're missing the smart one. Oh, what a fail of you a joke. You know what, Pete and Linda? You know what? I'd like to see you do brain surgery. Huh? Yep. Like, this is this bullshit. You can sit there and you can critique them for all their hard work. Have you ever built a bloody machine that pulls out brains? No, I don't think so. You haven't done shit. All right, Linda, you're smart. Pete, you're an idiot. You're worse than Bronson. At least Bronson did something. Yeah. You know, come on. Are we like, is that us? Is that what? a commentary by Espen on the viewers of a show critiquing it? Yep. You know, Specifically not, about us. They're not necessarily us, but other people like us critiquing all of the plot holes, all of the things that don't really work. And yeah. it's like, well, you're not making anything, are you? No. You're not really doing well, it. Well, we are. Well, we are technically, but it's like, it's very easy for us to criticize than it is to create. Bron has an idea. He's going to put the machine into reverse. Anthony thinks this is brilliant and tells Bronson to take Pete and Linda somewhere less public by going through the streets of Port Miranda. Yeah, that's a that's a good idea. I thought, why not just keep them all together? Yeah, why do you need to go home? Plot, I guess. Bronson carries the brains in a bucket of water and uses a remote control on the bodies to make them walk. That Anthony's rigged up, not you. And they go to the lighthouse. See, I thought this episode was going to be a Weekend at Bernie's episode, to be honest. Oh, yeah. That's what I thought it was just going to be. Uh, not really. Sort Weekend at is. Bernie's is great. That is a great movie. Yeah, it's very entertaining. Mm. Should see it. Tony and Faye are leaving in the car for Relationship Day. This is where they take interest in each other's interests. Have you ever done a Relationship Day? Yeah. Where you take interest in each other's interests? No. We just go out and do stuff. Okay. So you just hang out? Yeah. Go out and bloody cafe driving marketeering. Going to markets and stuff and looking at some cool shit that I don't want to buy. But go, oh, it's interesting. It's very interesting. Oh, what's that giant pencil? Oh, didn't mind if I did. I'll try some of that giant pencil. That'd be delicious. Oh, yeah. Maybe gem sausage. Oh, yeah. Where are, you, where are you getting giant pretzels? What, what, what markets, markets around? What markets? Oh, you just, like, there's one in the, um, the go to the east area. You go to the bloody... The Ipswich markets? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Get with it, mate. Get, get with like pleb here. I go to the, uh, you go to the better ones like the, uh, the organic markets or something. Oh, yeah. where are you going to tell me Red, where that at is? At the Redland Bay, man. Okay. It's pretty good. Pretty cool. good markets. Tony is going to a special place that he finds his inspiration. He's going to show Faye all about it, this special place. And Faye is going to take Tony to her favorite movie of all time. Hmm. Tony notices Pete and Linda wearing the helmets and he says, uh, you two look a bit lightheaded. And Bronson says, no, uh, well, my science project has taken a lot out of us, especially these two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All of those funny. brain puns. He, he uses his control to get them to shake their heads and smile. You know, you know what I did? I, I, I took another step back. Yeah. Um, I, I re, re, rewatched the scene. The green stickers that were on the back of Tony's truck are no longer there. Mmm. So was this the ABC stepping in saying, oh, we should have to take that out? Or was this Tony being disillusioned with the modern green party? Um, oh, I don't know. Because I was like, hang on, there should be at least something supporting the Greens there, and there's nothing there. So, I don't know why. Well, maybe he's just less politically active now, especially now that Nell is a senator, or no longer a senator. Oh, who knows? I don't know. Maybe the ABC just decided it was better to take the, all the political relevance out of a children's TV show. Probably not a bad idea, I guess. I don't For know. For a government-controlled television station. Probably. Probably a good idea. Yeah. All that trouble they've been well, lately sense. with Q and A. It made sense, yeah, yeah. It made sense though in season two for them to have such strong different political leanings because of the the overarching story. If you're going to include it, you know. Yep. But this season, I guess, doesn't make any sense. You know, we haven't seen the inside of Linda's room. What? I think we've seen it once or twice this season at best. Okay. Like, remember we saw it a oh, lot yeah. more in season one. Yeah. Yeah, we saw those stickers as well, but I'm, I don't know if those stickers are there. I think we would remember it. Yeah. Tony and Fade Leaf. And Bronson controls the twins to eat lots of porridge. He yeah. adds sugar to Linda's, he adds mustard to Pete's, and he makes them feed each other, and they're throwing food around, and the brains are upset, obviously, because he's desecrating their bodies. And food gets thrown at the controller, the, mm-hmm. the, the controller that controls them, and it breaks. And the bodies go haywire, and they start running down the street, and Bronson chases after them, because they're holding the brains in a bucket of water. I don't know how they were able to do this, because I would have thought if the controller was broken. What's controlling their bodies? Yeah, you know, I'm not sure. Maybe how are they just... able to run around and do things? Wouldn't they just crash into the first thing that they come across? I Surely guess so. they're opening doors and crossing roads and changing directions. Oh, I don't know, man. I think it's just like a haywire scenario. Yes. It's too complicated even to have it on a controller to have to drive a person. There's so much complex movement. 
something you can't do with a radio controller. Yeah, this is like, true. So they've got like six or seven direct, like six to eight directions or something yes. you can do. So you couldn't do that, I don't think. Something we haven't talked about is yes. that these people would obviously be dead, right? If their brains were gone. Yeah, totally. Yeah, there's no way around that. Yeah, and they'd both be in jail. Why would they both be in jail? No, oh, you mean Bronson and Bronson Anthony. and Anthony both be in jail? Yes, because they're murderers. Well, I don't know, manslaughter is maybe, but yeah, probably. Also, Anthony did not clear this with any ethical review board. If he ever submitted these papers, yeah. he would never... Well, Bronson would have to because he's the scientist in charge and Anthony's just helping him, right? Still, Anthony, who is an intelligent boy who probably would get a scholarship at the University of Melbourne, I'm imagining. Or um, Big Town. Bigston. Big, big, big Town. You know, big actually, Bill, Bill. because of its like, proximity to Melbourne, yes. the Split Point Lines house, yes. are they referring to Melbourne as Big Town? Uh, Someone from Melbourne, maybe. please write in and tell us, would that work? Or tell us what is a thirty minute what is that what would be a town closest to thirty minutes from Splitfield Lighthouse or whatever Split Split Point Lighthouse. Is that what it's actually called in I real think life? I think so, yeah. Because I was thinking about traveling to Melbourne at one stage cool. for a holiday and I was like, Oh, you know, where's the uh, lighthouse? I was like, probably gonna have a look at it and then you know, might as well go to the uh, go to Mecca, you know. In town, Bronson is chasing the bodies, and the bodies nearly knock over Gribble, and he says, You wimbersels, haven't you got a brain in your heads? Oh man, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, it's Sorry. only going to get worse. It's only going to get worse. The bodies, they go to school and they accidentally drop the brain bucket on a science project, which is a rocket, which then flies around the room, the science room, up out of a chimney thing that's there and into the sky. And then the bodies fall over. Yep. The rocket flies over Port Noranda and Anthony, who is reading a paper, I don't know what he was doing. He's supposed to be fixing this situation. What is he doing? He goes, oh, that can't be good. Yeah, no, it can't be good because if you were doing your job properly, it wouldn't have happened. Hmm. The rocket, it ends its firing and it shoots out its parachute and starts Descending. its descent. Yeah. And it falls down and lands neatly in a dump. Tony's in a dump with fate. C- hang on. This rocket, surely this is the best science project, right? Hmm. Yeah, I would imagine so. Better than the this weird brain thing that they're trying to do? Yeah. I would... This kid built a rocket. Who yeah, built it works. That? Who built the rocket? Uh, I don't know. Who in Port Noranda built a rocket? What are like, That's what I, I want to know. You know what I find weird is that the brains, they crawl up out of the bucket to look out. Sort of like, so they crawl up to the lip of the bucket to look out over to see, I guess, the ground. And be like, oh my gosh, we're really high up. I don't know where we are. And we're descending with a parachute. I wasn't aware that brains could see without eyes. Yeah, But they apparently, can. they can well, in this episode. Twins not only telepathic, but they have the mysterious third eye, which they can see out of as well. well there you go. Tony's in the dump with Faye. Because this is his special place for inspiration. Which is fair enough, because he makes a lot of his stuff out of and trash. It is a callback to a good tip for ghosts. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, where they get in stuff for his art. He's like, oh, he loves it. He lo- he's loving everything there. Yeah. Now, this one line that I'm about to read out is what has caused me to hate Faye more than any person ever. Yeah. And if anybody ever does this, mm-hmm. I would be very close to punching them in the face. And she says, when I said share each other's interests... I was hoping for something more interesting. Bitch. I I have some things to say about this. Yeah. You were a bitch. Yeah. Faye. And not just, you know, people can be bitches. It's not just women. Yeah. You know, you're a bad person. It's like, <laughs> oh, I was only interested in your interests if they're interesting. That's the whole point of this, Faye. You've decided this idea. That let's be more interested in each other's interests. And you're not showing interest. You only wanted Tony to be interested in your interests. Or you only want to be interested in his interests as long as they're interesting to you. That's the whole, that defeats the whole purpose. Yeah. You know, like, it's about understanding each other's interests. You don't have to she, be interested in each other's interests. She then gives it a go. She gets, you know, she, yeah, get, she does. And then she gets into it. So, you know, I feel like she Yeah, but to hold that on. initial stance. Well, it makes, well, I mean, come on. If you hold initial Give stance me. and then you, then you learn that, hey, expressing an interest in something, and I found that Tony's interests are really more interesting, you might learn for future events. Now, this is the Marty situation. Just because you come around doesn't mean that you're a good person. If you run uh, away and hide I, in the geoglider, I think, I think you're not she, a good person if you was, come back later. I think she did was fine. I don't like it. I think it was fine because later on they, they resolve it. You know, like, she doesn't even want to leave for the movie. She sort of does, but, like, she, like, really, like, takes an interest in Tony's stuff. And I was like, oh, well, you know, she didn't like it before, and I can understand that because... Powering through a dump is, is a hard sell to anybody. If, if Tony was like, hey, let's go to my interest, and I'll go, okay. I'd be like, this is disgusting, Tony. You are, you are a disgusting human being. But, okay, I'll give it a go. And then I'd plow through the dump, and I'd find some really old shit. And I'd be like, oh, that's so cool. It, you know, dumps are pretty cool if they didn't smell like crap. In this scenario, you were in a relationship with Tony. Is this what you're saying? Well, yeah, I guess so. 
Okay. Don't be so backwards, James. Tony, Tony says, it's um, a it's a pile of potential. It's a cradle of creativity. And we're back at the school. I actually looked up what type of art that is, too. What? What uh, type of art? Dump art? Recyclable no, art? I forget what it's called. I wrote it down. Uh, Renewable art. Oh, yeah, here it is. It's called, it's, it's an artistic movie called, it's an artistic movement called Found Object. Okay. Yeah. So maybe he was a leading, uh, pioneer in the new, uh, in the Victorian Found Object movement. Why not? You know? Maybe that's why he moved away from Melbourne because it was just too crowded. Crowded, man. It was just like, he was an avant garde and then everyone came in and he was like, these people, you know, they're all posers. Knowing from what I've seen at Goma, I feel like Tony would, be do he would do all right. Yeah, His art's a lot better than a lot of the stuff we've got at the Queensland Museum. Yeah. Anyway, it's school. Da, 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 da. Back at the lab at the science facility at the school, Anthony's done some calculations and he's worked out that the brains are in the tip and he sends Bronson to go and get them because Bronson is incredibly reliable and he's going to fix the bodies. The Gruel gang arrive, which spells bad news for Anthony, not you. Boom, boom, boom. We're at the tip. And the brains are in an empty bucket. All their water's fallen out. And Mm -hmm. Pete falls out and he lands in some dump water. And he says, I think I've just been brainwashed. I read into into that scene, man. That is a teenage boy swimming in shit. His brain is swimming in just crap. Yep. You know? And it's that, uh, you know, it describes that semi-enlightened mind that teenage boys have. Where they don't know anything, but they think they do. And I wrote as a note, see Jaden Smith. Hmm. Okay. See his Twitter profile and you know what I'm talking about. Jaden Smith's Will Smith's son, right? And yeah. his Twitter profile is an experience. Yeah, it is. It's a, uh, you know, that, uh, how can mirrors be real if our eyes aren't real? Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't remember. There's a whole bunch of stuff there. There's Go a lot of, there's some quality stuff there. It's just like when you're 14, I Don't guess. Don't look at his actual feed. Just type into Google best of Jaden Smith Twitter, I think would probably be the best yeah, way to go about it. Pretty much. Or best of Jaden Smith philosophy. Yep. Make sure you're in a good mood because there are some laughs. Yeah. Idiots. Idiots when they're popular think that well, they're intelligent. I don't know. They're not idiots. And they're he's l- clearly an idiot. I don't know. I think he's just 14. That's so what 14-year-olds all think they're enlightened. Not all 14-year-olds. Intelligent 14-year-olds have the wisdom to know that they're not enlightened. They don't. None of them do. <laughs> None of them do. <laughs> <laughs> when you're you teenager, you're... sweeping statement person. I will sweep those statements under the rug until they can't be found anymore. I don't know. Faye says, OMG, and Tony comes running. Has has she seen the brains? What's going on here? No. She's found a special plate, and the two of them start foraging for more. This this becomes a reoccurring thing. The the twist parents, mm-hmm. or Tony and Faye, are continually in situations where they're almost interacting with what's actually happening in the episode, and they're just having this weird subplot. It's almost like a Rick and Morty episode. Yeah, they're just of. having this inane plot line where the actually interesting stuff's happening with Rick and Morty. Yeah, pretty much. The brains, Pete and Linda, are worried about getting home. And Pete says brain power is the solution. So they start jumping. That's weird, eh? It is weird. I didn't realize that brains could hop, let alone hop along a road. What muscle allows you to do that? The are brain they, itself, I guess. They're using the telekinetic energy of the brain to be able to move itself. Is that I, what's happening? Yeah, I guess so. There's no other real waited for it to work like it doesn't make any sense how would a brain move on its own it, well it can't it can't no it would be, the best you would be th- dead yeah you well yeah of course but in this scenario they're alive for some reason so i guess they just have magic brain powers and they can be telepathic so that's kind of cool yes faye loves the tip now she loves foraging yeah. but it's time to leave for the movie back to the brains and both of them have headaches and pete says you're not used to mental exhaustion, having a go at Linda. And I wrote down here, there are too many puns. Yeah. I can't keep track. I just stopped trying after this point. Yeah. Stop trying to get them all because it's too much. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I just couldn't. I was like, fucking hell. Come on. Seriously. Everything everything you're saying, Pete. Like, this is season one, Pete, right? But it's not. It, it doesn't have the same no. oeuvre of it's the just, season one. It's just Pete. puns because of the theme of the episode, not puns because Pete's being a smart aleck. Yeah. See, his puns were character-driven. These puns are plot-driven. Yeah. This truck drives past and knocks both of them into the gutter. And yes, Doesn't kill them. Their, yeah. their brains are in the gutter. Or their minds are in the gutter. Yeah, we get it. Yeah. Bronson arrives at the tip and he's looking for anything brainy. Back at the lab, Anthony's fixed the machine and he's looking at Linda longingly. Now, I thought uh, this was no, getting... I wrote down pervy. Yeah. 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 I was about to say... Something very much similar, yeah. using an R word. Yeah, we know. It's, it gets, it's not great. No, it's weird. What comes off here, and he starts going through his stuff. Yeah. And he finds the Viking Book of Love, 
and he reads it to Linda's body. Now, we've got some input from Pontello, and this one's a little bit long. Yeah. But just listen, because he makes some really good points. He says, Another rule is established with the Viking Book of Love. The spell will work on the recipient, even if the brain isn't inside their body, like when Anthony reads the spell in front of Linda's brainless body. In episode four of this series, You Am I, I Am You, classic episode, it was established that the episode with the spell cast on them is attracted to the physical being who read the spell, regardless of whether their brain is present, like when Harold and Pete swap brains. Yeah. Fiona is still attracted to Pete, even though Harold's brain is inside Pete's head. So he tries to write this out in some simple, in a simple format, and this is pretty good. He says, A, spells affect the recipient's brain, Mm -hmm. okay? And B, recipient's brain becomes attracted to the body of the person who casts a spell. That's some good work. That is really good, actually. And it leads to one of the best lines of the episode that made me feel a little weird and uncomfortable because the girl was 13. What was the line? Oh, Anthony, love of my life, I'm coming, sugar plum. Okay, see, I didn't think that was dirty. You you just made it weird. Well, my name is Anthony, so when you hear, when you when you heard, <laughs> oh, Anthony. I don't want to know, Anthony. I don't love of know. my life. And it's like, no, no, bad touch, bad touch. You're 13. No, 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 no. See my hands, officer, please. You see my hands? See where they are? Yeah. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. Okay. Didn't feel, felt weird. The brains are trying to get back to their bodies, and they're trying to get through Port Noranda City. It's the busiest place that I've ever seen, because apparently there's people there now. Some days there's nobody there, some days there's people everywhere. Plot. Plot determines how many people live in this town at any one point in time. There's like a guy who comes out in the middle of the town and says, Today we're only going to have 20 people allowed in the town. And it's like, why? Oh, they're shooting some, like, episode within the town. Oh, okay, no worries. It, 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 everything... Re- Everything goes around the round the twist family, which lends itself to be what, Joseph? I don't know, Anthony. What is it? Some sort of coma. Great. Linda's brain falls in love with Anthony. Of course it does. As Pontillo said. And Bronson finds a brain bucket in the tip. He thinks that the seagulls ate his family. And he says, they're brain dead. Mm. The puns just continue to roll. Unlike heads. Tony and Faye are at the Scout Hall Cinema... And Tony wants to see Payback, which is playing. Yeah. Okay? But he goes to see the romance film with Faye. Yeah. Linda and Pete hop past as they go into the cinema, and Linda is calling out for Anthony. Oh, Anthony. Anthony. Anthony." I thought this was a bit much. Because in the past, when a character's been in love with something, they don't just keep calling that character's name. It kind of affects their personality a little bit, but they still operate as I totally agree. I don't appreciate the advances. Linda, I'm a married man, and you're like 13. Okay. Yeah, calm down, calm down, Calm down. All right, back off. Yeah. Back the fuck off. <laughs> Brains, they accidentally hop on a skateboard, and then we we start Polarity to get to the... Hilarity ensues. This is, this is the entire episode is, Brains do this, hilarity ensues. They jump on a skateboard, and they're taken on a journey through the town, and when the skateboard stops, they're launched onto a meat tray going into a butcher's. They're on a mental leap. Huh. Yeah. Uh, and they're being sold as lamb's brains for one dollar. They're wrapped up in paper and taken home by the Snapmeister himself. Snap is in a park, because apparently that's where he goes on the weekend, and he's going to barbecue brains. I don't know why everyone's having barbecues here. They're not even park barbecues. They're just barbecues they brought themselves. I got that Snapper... He got, I got this Hannibal Lecter vibe from him. Yeah. Modern Hannibal Lecter. A little bit. the series Hannibal. Hannibal. Yeah. A random football, because he's in a park, lands on the table that Snapper's set up and launches Snapper's brain to a Pete and Linda, and they're launched up in the air. They're hit by a cricket bat, and then they hit... Yeah, right? Like, that doesn't... That wouldn't kill you. They intercept a dead chicken, which is being carried by a lady, and now, as Pontillo says, apparently, dead raw chickens have the ability to fly. And the chicken fly around. flies the brains around. I don't know how the brains are hanging on. They're just flying around. Maybe the brains are powering the dead chicken. Maybe. I don't know. And they, they fly, and then they land past Snapper into a park toilet. They now go through the toilet drain, launched out of the, the pipes into the ocean. Why is the sewage pipe of Port Noranda going directly into the yeah, ocean? That why, is something I, I would I like, like to know. F- like, of all the environmental things you could do uh, and oppose now when you, in Season 2, why is it that the waste is going out into the ocean? That is, it seems like that would be the number one thing you should stop. The the thing that I'm more concerned about is Nell is fishing directly next to the sewerage. Yeah, outlet. she's getting 
She's getting like a sh- shit fish or whatever, you know? We already know that Port Noranda has a sewage treatment facility. Why is it going directly into the ocean? Yeah, good question, Joe. Because in season one, there's a sewage farm. There's a sewage farm. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't go into the ocean. Pete's tooth didn't go into the ocean. It went to the sewage treatment plant. Why they changed? I don't know. Nell fishes them out of the water and launches them back into the street. A dog comes to eat them, then runs away because a, sw- a street sweeper launches them up off the ground and directly into Bronson's head. Yep. You know, this is a, among the more ridiculous things that I've watched. Yeah. It's a comedy of unbelievable errors. It is. Yeah. It is indeed. And Bronson says, oh, I recognize these brains, gets a moist cloth, wraps them up, and Gribble comes out of nowhere, senior Gribble, and he asks Bronson if he's seen James. And he needs James to wash his car because he himself... Big Gribble, Harold, is allergic to road grime and sneezes into the brain cloth. I think it's, I, th- I think it's, I'd say, an ironic jab. Is it an ironic jab? No. It's a jab at the, uh, the rich, wealthy guy, you know? Yes. He's a greasy, stingy, sort of grimy kind of guy, and he's allergic to grime. He's not the kind of guy to get his hands dirty. Yeah, and he, and he is. So. Ho, ho, ho. That's the joke. Bronson takes the brains back, goes back to the lab, and Anthony is missing. Where's Anthony? Where is He's he? stuck in a cupboard because the Gribbles have come and tied him up and left him in a science lab and taken Pete and Linda's bodies. That's right. Now I remember that, yeah. Yeah. But then again, you didn't even need the Gribbles at the, gribbles at the start. The Gribbles could have just found him in the lab. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And would, same thing would have happened. This is true. The Gribbles gang are using the remotes to make Pete clean the car and Linda bring them drinks. Mm-hmm. And then they start making Pete and Linda dance for them because of weird... Sexual Cause, overtones. Because they're wealthy and they're the lower class. Puppet. Puppet masters. Well, yeah, they're like making them do stuff. And then the proletariats revolt, basically. <laughs> yeah. Anthony and Bronson, not you, they arrive to use a bigger controller to make the twins throw water and hose down the Gribble Gang. And they throw the food and drinks that they're catering onto them. And they get all grimy and mucky because goopity goop goop Nickelodeon. The yeah. twists escape with Anthony and they run back to the lab. Yeah. James Gribble, he says... Revenge of the nerds, hey? Well, we'll see about that. They chase the twists back to the school. Revenge of the nerds, by the way. Fantastic movie. If you haven't seen it, go and watch it. It's worth it. Faye is leaving the cinema, and she's quite sad. Tony follows her, and he's even sadder. He's crying. You know, he's an emotional man, and... He says, exactly. Sharing each other's interests. She loved him all along. She loved him all along, and cruel fate tore them apart. Now... As we said, the posters on the wall is for two movies. Payback. Payback and Practical Magic. Now, I determined that those film, those posters were used because the leading character, well, not leading characters in both of them, but lead roles in those, both of those films were iconic Aussie actors of Mel Gibson and Nicole Kidman. Yeah. But if you've seen Practical Magic, and I unfortunately have, the ending to Practical Magic does not go that way. The Cruel Fate does not tear them apart. They actually, Resolve with the boyfriend and girlfriend scenario. It all sort of works fine in the end. Yeah, I don't... But that's the start of Practical Magic. The start of Practical Magic is that the Sandra Bullock's character and her boyfriend basically can't be together, and I think her boyfriend dies. I'm honestly just a little bit surprised that you've seen Practical Magic. I have seen it, okay? I've seen a bit of it. And so I don't think they were watching Practical Magic. What do you think they were watching? I, I think they were watching generic romance Yeah, film. generic romance Maybe um maybe they're watching Romeo and Juliet, Baz Luhrmann's Romeo and Juliet, because that ends with that sort of scenario. Pete, Linda, Anthony and Bronson walk past the cinema, and the sign on the wall has the poster for Payback, and there's a coming sticker on it, as in coming soon, so it says Payback is coming. A little bit of foreshadowing for what's to come, because we go back to the lab, and they're preparing the transfer. The brains, they're shot in, but it's been set up wrong. So, the brains are switched over. Pete's got Linda's brain, Linda's got Pete's brain. So, we did get there eventually. Hey, here's the thing though, but... Yes. The, the, the UMI brains, when they swapped, right, they still had... It was just consciousness, The voices right? stayed the same. Yeah, the consciousness stayed the same. But in this case, when the physical swap happened, the voices changed. Yeah, because the brain... The I don't know. Changed. I think the vocal cords would need to change for the no, voices to change. That's what I would have thought too, right? Yeah. Linda, in Pete's body, loves Anthony, and she doesn't care about being in the wrong body. Which is pretty weird. Mm-hmm. She's like, love is blind, right? So she wants to have... A homosexual? A homosexual relationship with, with Anthony. Pete. Which right. Anthony's not cool about. Yeah. Because he only wants her for her body. 
I don't know. Probably. Who knows? I don't know. Look, it's it'd be tough, all right? It'd be it would tough. be. I would. I have. I would be super weirded out. I would not want a part in this. Well, I'm not attracted to men. Like, yeah, that'd be hard. <laughs> you know, I'd be like, no, nah, get gone. Well, I'm moving the, on. Yeah, it would be a bit tougher than that. I mean, if that ever happened in my life or something, but it'd just be like, yeah, it's very tough because I don't like fucking a dude. Hey, whatever. That's that's. We don't need to get any deeper than that. <laughs> <laughs> Bronson triggers the brain machine again. And now Pete, Linda, and Anthony all land at the tank because they're wildly flailing around with the nose pipe and it ends up in Anthony's nose and his t- brain flies out. And Bronson says, this is an apostrophe. Hmm. Classic. Classic Bronson word switching. Mm-hmm. The Gribble gang arrive for revenge and they're like, we're going to get you, twists. And Bronson quickly sticks the nose probe up in Gribble's nose and we cut to the science fair. That, was, Bronson's that is won. such bullshit. What? That is such a bullshit thing right there. Like, nothing else really got... Well, they're, they're setting up for what's to come. Bronson's won the fair, and James comes in being remote controlled with his brain helmet on to give the certificate because his brain is in a jar being held by rabbit and tiger. And James says, when I get out of this, I'll brain you. Ugh. 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 That Tell is you what. the end of the episode. It was. It was indeed. What'd you think? Uh, you first. We'll get, actually, look at that Pontillo go first. Yeah, Pontillo from Pontifications says, A thoroughly enjoyable episode with some great scenes. Pete and Linda's brain adventure through Port Miranda. Linda falling in love with Anthony with the aid of the Viking Book of Love. Mr. Snapper almost eating Pete and Linda's brains. Flying dead chooks. How it sneezes his brains out. Pete and Linda's body controls falling into the wrong hands. Could well be my favourite episode of season series three. Okay. He, he points out something that we did fail to miss. When Gribble sneezes into the brain cloth, he goes, I've sneezed my brains out. Yeah. Well, you know, it's each time. I just, own. you know, I just got overwhelmed with the amount of puns in this episode. Pontillo gives this episode 9 out of 10 spaghetti bowls with some parsley and a little dill. Oh, yes. Very nice. I have to say, I do love the dill pickle. Mm-hmm. You love a dill pickle? I love I, the dill I, pickle. I do like dill pickles as well. Do you prefer gherkin or dill pickle? Oh, fuck. I don't know. I'm not a... Gherkin, a pickle connoisseur, mate. I, just, I am. I love the the dill pickle. It's just yeah, well, I love dill pickle. All right, so what do you what do you? The gherkin's let's, let's too see, sweet. Let's, what's your rating? I was just talking. You overcut me while I'm talking about how sweet the gherkin is, as compared to the dill pickle with the its, comparable sweetness its of a bite. gherkin. Yes, to a dill pickle. Spike. What what would I give the episode? Uh, I was not as hot on this episode. Definitely not as much as Pontillo. I give it about four out of ten. Marinated. Spaghetti lamb brain pasta dish. Oh, that's interesting. I was also not as hot on this episode. Uh, I just didn't really like it. So I gave it, and mostly for this reason, I gave it 4 out of 10 bowls of punishing kapunti with side order of napani, with a side order of napani sauce and a sweet puns for dessert. That's okay. puns. Yes, thank you for all those puns there. They, they were overwhelming. I think there's just too many. You know, Captain Planet sometimes overwhelms me with the amount of puns they have in it, but they just crammed them in here. Like every opportunity, right? Every opportunity. Yes. That's everything we're going to talk about mm-hmm. from the episode, but let's get into some other list of feedback. So, uh, in the last week, Anthony did a poll on Chicken Twisties, which yep. is the group for people who are engaged with the show. You know, you can put in your feedback for the show and we'll read it out like we do Regan's pontifications yep pontillo's pontifications there should be a link in this this week's episode to join chicken twisties so you can put your feedback and notes anything you want us to read out based on the camp planet episode the round the twist episode or our podcast anything you want us to read out really and we also have other conversations so as i was saying anthony put a poll up what was your favorite round the twist episode yep and the results were the, uh, we had Madeline Wilson say that uh, she wasn't really sure of the name of the episode that was her favourite, but she, but she distinctly remembers the one with the dead fox uh, yes. that needed lemons. She said specifically that it gave her nightmares. Yeah, and I can see that because it's yeah. pretty pretty scary. It's kind of scary. It's really weird that there's this fox in your cupboard that's like, give me lemons. I must have lemons. Well, it didn't say that, but you know that's what I was thinking. Yeah, thanks, Madeline. Seemed like a bit of a cool cat. Thanks yeah. for writing in. Yeah, it must be a cool person. I've never met that person before. <laughs> uh Joe and Regan both agreed that uh, Spaghetti Pig Out is definitely there, you know, so that's it, Joe Lewis, of course. Yeah, it, it, fantastic episode. Yep. Fantastic. Now, Hayden Redding told us that about this one episode, a couple of episodes, one with uh, Bud Tingle, who I remember actually from... The Castle? No, actually, I remember Bud Tingle from Fast Forward or the other show, 
that was like it. Uh, some sketch show. Frontline? Uh, like, no, it wasn't Frontline. It was something else. Something very similar. Comedy okay. style. So I remember him, but apparently there's an episode with him playing a Rainmaker. And apparently there's also one with a... There's an episode where the twists go back in time to war times to prevent invasions. Is that... I don't remember that one. Yeah, I don't remember that one either. But if that happened, man, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> All Redding, right. Redding is either having a go at us here. Mm-hmm, you could know, be. And our naivety of Realm of Twist episodes, I guess. Or... It could have just magical episodes that we've just not seen yet. Maybe. Liam Spencer, you know, a new guy, new list, new, new fan, has said he likes uh, Lighthouse Blues, but also Without My Pants or The Copy, which, of course, was a certain person's favourite episode, a Mr. Walpole's. He liked The Copy, and I think if you know the character, you know why he liked The Copy. Double the Linda, double the fun. And lastly, uh, Phil Bates, you know, hits us with uh, two classics. Whirling Dirtfish and Little Squirt. I can't say who won the poll, per se, but I guess... What do you mean, won the poll? Well, I can't say it's not a competition, but I guess Spaghetti Pig Out, technically, if it's a poll. Oh, you're saying who got the most votes. Yeah, I guess, but I never really put up an official poll. It's more like a questionnaire, right? A questionnaire, yeah. Mm. So if you want to be involved in future questionnaires, you can, of course, join Chicken Twisties, as we talked about. Absolutely. One of the other things that we did recently on social media was Anthony created a bingo card with the help of some of our listeners from Chicken Twisties. And you can, of course, follow along at home. See Absolutely. if you can get bingo. Yeah, see if you can get bingo. Stuff that we do. I I wouldn't put it past you for not being able to do that. I think you could do it. What do you get if you get bingo? The enjoyment of having one. Yes, exactly. And I'll ship you a rock, maybe. No, you won't. Like I could. If you want to. Yeah, if you want a free rock, just... Just call out bingo and I'll give you, I'll send you a rock. We are looking into Tales from the Twist shirts, so maybe that's something we could send out at some point. Yeah. But whatever. I'd wear that, whatever. Cool. So. Cool, cool, cool. That is pretty much everything we've got time to talk about, other than how you can engage with us further. How can you find us, Anthony? Well, you're right. we talked about Chicken Twisties, which you can join, but you yes. want to subscribe to us on iTunes and give us a rating. We really could do with that. That would be awesome. We love ratings. Um, and a review. You don't have to give a review. You can just rate. Five stars, four stars, three stars. If you want to give us two or one stars, whatever, sure. Okay, I guess that's fine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we won't hold it against you unless we do. Yeah, unless we do, but we uh, won't. But, but we won't, unless, we, unless, unless we of course, do. we do. Now, of course, you can find us on Facebook and on YouTube at Tales from the Twist. Twitter is TFT Twists. And our website is talesfromtwist.wordpress.com. Cool. Yeah, that's it. Is that all of the ways? That is all the ways. Sweet. Well, thank you very much for listening to this week's episode of Tales from the Twist, where we talk about Round the Twist. Next week, we alternate back to Capron Planet, then the week after, we're back to Round the Twist. Thank you very much for listening. My name's been Joseph Lewis. And I'm Anthony Bull. Have a great week. Stay twisty.